All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Aquarium's Online Academy. My name is Talia. I'm from our education department, uh, and we're really excited for you to be, whoa, to you be with us this morning. Um, so today, there's some kind of clues behind me what, what animal we're going to be talking about today. Uh, today, we're going to be learning about sharks. We're also going to be learning about their teeth as well. So I hope you guys are ready uh, with some shark questions, or we'll just learn a little bit more about sharks today. Um, now, we would love for you to interact with us uh, during this program, and there's a couple of ways to do that. So one way um, is to text questions in live. So we have a number down there on your screen right there, and it's 562-286-1838 if you'd like to text us uh, during our live broadcast today. If you're watching this a little bit later on, or if you think about something a little bit later, oh man, that's a really great question. You can email us too. So there's an email address down below there too if you want to ask us questions after we're done streaming today. And that email address is live at lbaop.org. So those are two ways to interact with us uh, today depending on when you're watching. So um, let's take a moment first off um, to use our scientist brains today. We're going to make some observations. We're going to do some learning by looking today. Um, and let's try to take a look at some of the sharks in Shark Lagoon here. And that's what um, is kind of being projected behind me here. I have Mr. Stewie, uh, Mr. James, who is, uh, whoa, there's a fish are going for my head this, this past week. That's the, <laughs> that's the theme. Anyways, he's controlling all the uh, cool things that are behind me here. And then I have Miss Allie at another computer. She's going to be helping relay all those fantastic questions uh, during our program this morning. So let's take a moment uh, to make some observations. Let's try to figure out if we can kind of start off with some basics today and let's try to figure out with what makes a shark a shark. Let's go make some observations. I'm going to get out of the way so you can see more awesome sharks. Of course, all the sharks go in the background now that I say that. Oh, there's one. Kind of come towards the foreground. There's a black tip reef shark that went by figure out why it's called that. Hmm. Let's see if we can get some more glimpses of our shark. Wow, Mr. Stewie, uh, Mr. James switched it up to our one of our tropical cameras here. That's our uh, our zebra shark swimming, which is a little tricky because you might be looking really closely at this shark here and being like, hold on. Nom. That shark that Miss Talia just said was a zebra shark, that shark had polka dots all over its body. And I know, Nom, I know for a fact that zebras have a whole bunch of stripes. Ooh, there's some more swimming right now. Um, so zebra shark, in case you're wondering, they're named after what they look like when they're born. They do have black and white stripes like a zebra. And then they get older and the stripes stretch and they turned into polka dots. So it's a little bit of a tricky name. They're called a leopard shark in Australia, which makes a little bit more sense uh, to what they look like when they're grown up. So we already had a leopard shark in California, so we stuck with zebra shark. So that's the story of how the, uh, how the zebra shark got its name. So I notice, because we're seeing a lot of them swimming a little bit more, I notice that our sharks have some pretty cool fins. That's kind of one of the ways I definitely know that it's a type of fish. They got fins on the top, they got fins on the side, they got fins on their tail. And that helps them swim around. So those fins are kind of doing different jobs. And like you use your arms and your legs for different things when you're swimming in the water. Another thing you might have noticed, especially since we're getting some closer looks, you might have noticed that they have lines on the side of their body right about here. Um, and those are their gills. So sharks don't have lungs like us. Uh, they have gills inside their body. Here's a good picture of one. This is a sand tiger shark. They have these lines here and that helps the shark breathe in the water. So instead of our lungs um, getting oxygen from the air, uh, they're getting oxygen from the water instead. And those gills 
are helping them do that. So they're opening it up. The water is passing over those gills, and that's helping get that oxygen out of the water. How many gills do they have, I wonder? Hmm. Maybe we can count them here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, and then the fifth one's kind of squished right against them. I'm like squinting here. Five. So sharks have, for the most part, they have five gill slits. Let's see if we can count them on this one. This is our black tip reef shark. One, two, three, four, five. See, uh, most sharks have five. Now there are some exceptions to the rule, my friends. There um, is a shark out there with six gill slits, and guess what? We call it. Are you ready? It is the sixth six gilled shark. The six gilled shark has six gills. Now, my friends, we have a shark out there. Are you ready for it? With seven gill slits. And guess what we call it? You'll never guess it. Did you guess it? Oh, you guys are right. It is indeed the seven gilled shark, which has seven gills. So sometimes our naming makes sense. Sometimes with the like with the zebra shark, it's a little bit trickier. Um, so those are some of the things that make a shark a shark. They have fins. They have gills. Um, and I see we have some observations coming in. I saw that um, Val uh, Valeria and and Gyro. Ha, say, saw a, oh, they saw a black fin shark. That was our black debris shark. I think it's actually coming back. I think I just saw it in the corner of my eye there. Let's see if it comes towards the screen. There it goes, whoosh. And you're right, they do have a little black tip on the top of their fin. So that's why we call it a black tip reef shark. Is thanks to that little black spot on the top of their fin there. And they, ooh, they made Miss, Miss Allie wrote, Wrote sideways for him, so I'm turning my head here. Um, they made a, another excellent observation of not a shark. They saw a turtle in a cave. You guys have good, good eyesight there. So I'm going to see if I can get out of the way. So I can. Ah, you guys really saw it. It is probably hiding right in there. That's one of our turtles. That's our Olive Ridley Sea Turtle. I forget if it's Lou or Theo out there. Might be Lou. But yeah. Good job. You definitely have a turtle that lives in here too that's hiding in that way, that cave right there. Very good. All right. Now, one of the other things that makes a shark a very special type of fish that's a little bit harder to see um, in terms of what we're looking, but let's take a moment to look a little bit closer about how a shark moves. So we got a blown of our black tips kind of coming around the bend here. Let's see if we can make some observations of how does a shark move? Not necessarily what it's using, but if you're going to describe the way it was swimming, how would you do that? Hmm. So you might say that a shark kind of swims um, a little bit wiggly, a little bit side to side. They kind of move their body this way and that way. Sometimes I've heard people say it, it kind of moves a little bit like a snake. It's a little bit bendy in places. Um, now, we can't move quite the same way as a shark, right? Our kind of body moves in a very um, particular fashion, and that is thanks to our skeleton. So we have a hard skeleton on the inside. We have joints elbows, on our hands, and our fingers, on our wrists, and that makes our body kind of move in a particular way. And sharks have a different type of skeleton in their body. They are, um, have a skeleton made out of cartilage. Now, that's a really, really big word, but you might know where cartilage is. And it's, remember that they move kind of Wiggly squiggly, a little bit side to side. Do you have a part on uh, on your face that's maybe a little bit more wiggly squiggly than other spots? Mm -hmm. If you touch the tip of your nose, 
a little bit wiggly there. You touch like the tops of your ears. Your ears are pretty wiggly squiggly compared to um, my chin. My chin's pretty hard. My ears are pretty wiggly squiggly. So here and here, that's where you have some cartilage on your body. So that's what the shark skeleton is made out of. They actually don't have true bones like we have bones in our arms. They don't have bones in their body. Isn't that cool? So that makes them a very special type of fish called a cartilaginist fish. And that's why they move a little bit more wiggly squiggly than, ooh, that's actually, we can compare them to the rest of the fish that are in the exhibit here, which are bony fish. So they have hard skeletons inside like we do. Sharks have those soft, squishy skeletons made out of cartilage. That's why they move a little bit different than their neighbors. Ooh, we have some more questions coming in. Ooh, these are good questions. So Xavier was asking, how many kinds of sharks are there? Ooh, that is a great question. There are a lot. I want to say there's about 300 different types of sharks and rays, maybe a little bit higher than that. But there's a lot, a lot, a lot of different types of sharks. And we have uh, just a handful of the of the, the many different kind of varieties here at the aquarium. Uh, Elizabeth was asking, are sharks born with teeth? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I believe they are. Um, I think kind of like us, it, um, it comes in at a certain point. But once they're out of either mama or, in this case, out of an egg, uh, some sharks do lay eggs outside their body like a chicken. It's kind of weird, but kind of cool. Um, I believe they do have whatever set of chompers uh, they need to, uh, to eat their food. And that's actually definitely one of the things we're going to talk about uh, today as well. Because we have to talk about sharks and their teeth today. Um, their teeth are super cool. So they definitely have different types of teeth depending on what types of food they're eating. Oh, Miss Coco um, is asking a question as well. Good morning, Miss Coco. Um, so she is asking, how do sharks sleep? Ooh, that is a fantastic question. So sharks don't sleep like us. They don't have a little seabed and some covers to pull up over their head and they're going to conk out for like eight hours. They kind of sleep swim, I believe. So um, they kind of are more resting than taking a big, big, big nap. Um, and I think very similar kind of whales and dolphins. I think they are turning off parts of their brain on and off so that um, they can kind of rest a little bit more than, uh, than take a really long nap. So they're always kind of a little bit of aware of what's going on around them. It's kind of like when you're first starting to fall asleep, you're kind of, your brain's still thinking about stuff, um, are not quite like dreaming yet, but um, that's kind of what they do when they sleep. So you might actually notice some of our sharks might take a nap every once in a while. In here, zebra sharks definitely can take a nap. Um, and that's because, remember we talked about their gills? Some of them have special muscles that let them open and close their gills. And they can take a nap just fine. That's a great question. Uh, and then Katie was asking, how did the megalodon go extinct? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know the specific cause of what caused it to go extinct. Um, I don't know if it's the same way the dinosaurs went out or if it was something um, a little bit... Ah, uh, Mr. James said they were out-competed, so there was something bigger and better that came along. Oh, excuse me. I'm learning all sorts of new things today. We're all learning together today. So uh, Mr. James was saying that something smaller came along and out-competed them. Their food, I would take it? Ah, so they ate up all the food that the Megalodon was trying to eat, too. Um, and that's, I guess, why it went extinct. So I learned something new. And since we brought up the megalodon, I was going to show it a little bit early, a little bit later, but I'll show it now. This is what their teeth looks like. So they were a really big shark. And just to give you some comparison, they have a great white behind me. And people say that um, those guys are kind of related to each other. They're kind of like, like ancestors of each other a little bit. So this is, and we think of a great white as a big shark, right? So this is a megalodon's tooth. This is a great white's tooth. So very, very different considering we think of a great white as a pretty big shark. But Megalodon, much, 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 much bigger. All right. Good questions, my friend. I think we have one more question coming in. And then we'll talk about their teeth a little bit more in detail. Uh, Valeria and, and Gyro were asking, um, when our sharks get sick. Ah, so when our sharks get sick here at the aquarium, how do we help them? That's a great question. So we have kind of a team um, of, uh, of veterinarians to help look after them. Uh, we also have a team called 
husbandry, and that's kind of a big word. And they're kind of uh, the people that help help them on kind of a day-to-day -day basis. So they're the ones making sure they get breakfast, lunch, and dinner, kind of keeping an eye on them, making observations like we are with their eyes and making sure, are they swimming okay? Are they moving something? So if they get sick, uh, then we can kind of like, if your dog, your cat got sick at home, uh, you can take them to the vet, then we could take them to our vet here at the aquarium and help them out. So maybe they need um, some a pl nice quiet place to be to rest. Maybe they need uh, some surgery or some stitches. Maybe they need some medication. So we can kind of figure out special ways to give that to a shark to help them out um, if they get sick. That's a great, great question. Um, all right, so let's jump into a little bit more about their teeth. So we looked a little bit about sizes of teeth in terms of a megalodon versus a great white. Um, and one of the cool things I think about when I think about sharks and their teeth is they kind of use them like different tools. I wonder if you think when you sit down for kind of lunch or dinner or breakfast, um, you have different tools to help you eat, right? You're not just taking a big old ham, uh, you know, a big old piece of chicken with your hand and going, just like that. Um, you might use some tools to help you out. So maybe you have a fork uh, to help you kind of hold on to that piece of chicken. Maybe you have a knife to kind of cut it into smaller pieces so you're not shaking it with your hand and putting it in your mouth um, like that. Um, so sharks' teeth kind of serve different purposes as well. So let's go take a look at my document camera over here. I have a couple of jaws that I need to get in better position to, uh, to look a little bit at their teeth. All right, let's see. Let's do the top jaw. That's probably easier. Whoa! Here's some shark teeth. I'm making shark teeth fall all over the place, but that's okay. I'm gonna zoom in. Zoom. Yeah. Her. Stay. Okay. Cool beans. All right. So, shark teeth behind me here, and um, you might notice with these ones that their edges are just a little bit, they look a little jagged. They're not completely smooth. And this is a type of tooth called a serrated tooth. So think like, um, if again, with that piece of chicken, these teeth kind of act like knives uh, and they're gonna help them um, cut whatever they're trying to eat into smaller pieces so it's easier for them to, to swallow. So um, sharks can go after prey uh, things that they'd like to eat that are much bigger than the size of their mouth. So sometimes they're going after big things uh, like seals and sea lions, really, really big fish. Sometimes they even go after, I think, whales every once in a while too. And those teeth are going to help them catch food that is much bigger than what they can open, um, you know, open their mouth to. So that helps them get food that's much, 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 much bigger than them. Ooh, Nathaniel's asking, why are the sharks... Ah, why are there sh there fish in the shark lagoon? Uh, if some sharks eat fish, that's a great question. Um, so, because you think we want to put friends together here at the aquarium, right? We don't want um, sharks eating the other fish that are in the exhibit. That's a good question. So these particular sharks, uh, like our black tip reef shark and our zebra sharks, they are not so much, at least for the zebra shark, they're not so much... Um, sharks that like to eat fish very much. So, uh, at least for the zebra shark, the zebra shark's mouth is way underneath. They're going to be going after crabs and clams and snails and things. Um, so sometimes we try to put sharks in here that aren't quite uh, looking for fish to eat. They also kind of know when they're going to get fed too. So here at the aquarium, they get fed at certain times of the day and they've kind of figured out essentially how to tell time. And they're like, I know at this time of day, that's when I'm going to get breakfast or lunch or dinner. So they kind of know to wait to here at the aquarium. So um, there are some sharks that, that like our black tips, I think those guys would typically be eating maybe a little bit of fish too, but um, not so much their, their, their main menu. So we try to put sharks in with fish that aren't really eating fish in terms of their diet. And then also a lot of our animals kind of know when it's feeding time as well. Um, so um, we have uh, our point, our kind of serrated teeth we were looking at earlier. There's another type of tooth. Let's see. Did I drop it? Hmm. I 
actually, I'll just flip it around because that'll help me out. These teeth on the bottom here, they look, yeah, move down so you can actually see it. Oh gosh, I'll turn the light down. Okay, so these ones look a little bit different, right? They kind of had serrated teeth on the top. These ones look a little bit more long and pointy. So remember, think about tools at your dinner table. These are a little bit more like forks. So they're going to be helping um, hold on to something that's slippery like, like a fish um, and, uh, and then use it to swallow as well. So different sharks have different teeth to help them do different jaws. Now, there's one other shark that has a pretty unusual mouth. And I'll let you take a look at it here. Whoa, that's way, way different than what we were seeing before. I'll zoom out so you can kind of get a better picture. Were you expecting a mouth like that when you thought we were going to talk about sharks and teeth today? This one has really, really interesting teeth, right? Look at these. These are like little round little bumps all over the place. But there's some of these up here that maybe look a little bit more they're a little bit rounder still, but maybe they look a little bit more like some of the teeth we might be expecting. So this jaw is from a type of shark called a, uh, a Port Jackson shark. They're found in Australia, I think in the southern part of Australia. And they're a little guy that likes to eat stuff on the bottom. Now let's think about what kinds of food lives at the bottom of the ocean. And how would these teeth help them out? So if you're thinking about, and here's what that shark looks like in case you're wondering, I'll get out of the way so you can see it a little bit more. So let's think about stuff that's like way, way on the bottom, like stuff in the sand like you can see in this picture. Um, so they might be looking for worms. They might be looking for crabs. They might be looking for snails. Now, wait a minute. What do snails and crabs have kind of over their body? They have something hard, right? So they have a hard shell that that shark would need to get through to help them eat their food. And that's what those really weird looking teeth help them do. They kind of act like our molars. We have flat teeth in the back of our mouth. That's going to help us kind of chew, kind of break up our food a little bit more. Um, so because if you have like a big piece of celery, you're not really going to you know, work on it all the way with your front teeth. Maybe you're going to use your front teeth to get that initial piece off, but then you're going to use your back teeth to chew, 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 and make that a whole lot smaller. So those funny teeth, I'll go back to my document camera over here. Those funny teeth that they have right over here, those are going to be acting like those molars, and those are going to help them break open that hard shell that a clam or a crab might have to help them get their lunch. Oh, I see we have some more questions coming in. Alexander was wondering, how many teeth do sharks grow per year? Ooh, that is a great question. Miss Allie, help me out here. So they lose about 30,000 teeth in a lifetime. That I knew. Um, and they lose about, or they grow about, so they have about 30,000 teeth in their life. Um, they have about 20, they oh, ah, okay. I'm, I'm figuring out Miss Allie's math here. Okay, so. So I was like, are we still on the same, on the same value? Okay, so here we go. 30,000 teeth in their lifetime. They live about 20 years. So to do the math, um, that would be, they would be growing about 1,500 teeth per year. Oh my goodness. Average, on average. So that is a whole lot of teeth. And that actually brings me, you must have read my mind, Alexander, because I actually wanted to talk about how they replace their teeth as well. We have a couple more minutes together this morning. So I'm going to go back to one of my jaws. I think I'm going to go back. Keep forgetting that the pork jackson has a hinge on it. It scared me. OK, I'm going to take my blue teeth here. This is from a blue shark. And I'm going to flip it around. And hopefully you can see. Let's see. I'm going to go. Let's try the bottom. Let's see if you can see it a little bit better there. A little bit. Let's go back. 
Gotta change my mind. Okay. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on one of the sections. That's better. Okay. Maybe. Okay. So, one of the cool things about sharks, let's see, I'm going to go over here so you can see it a little bit better. Cool. Um, is the way that they replace their teeth. We kind of have two sets of teeth in our life. We have our baby teeth. Those fall out. We get our grown-up teeth, and that's it. If we have something that happens to those grown-up teeth, we have to go uh, get kind of a, a false tooth or something to replace it, right? We don't get another set of teeth after that. Sharks are constantly replacing their teeth all the time. That is kind of thanks to remember that skeleton that's made out of cartilage. They're not set in bone like ours are. Um, they're set in um, that squishy, flexible stuff. So they can just bite into breakfast and lose some teeth. But thankfully, they have some really cool ways to replace them. So do you notice that I'm going to get my backwards pointing good today? Yay! So there's this tooth here. That's kind of in the front, because remember we flipped the jaw around. There's another tooth that is uh, uh, behind it. And then there's another tooth that's right behind that. And I think there might even be another tooth behind that. So sharks have rows and rows and rows and rows of teeth. And that um, helps them replace them. So they lose that tooth in the front. And then the next one will kind of move up to take its place. It's kind of like a conveyor belt. And then if they lose that one, there's another one behind it, and that one will move up and take its place. So that's how they lose so many teeth in a lifetime, those 30,000 um, teeth that they lose over their entire life. So um, I think there must be a special branch of shark tooth fairies out, of, out there in the ocean, because I think they would put ours out of business pretty quick if they're losing that many teeth. So I think there's a, there's a special branch of the tooth fairies that take care of all the sharks in the ocean. Um, very cool. I think we might have some more questions coming in here. But now another thing that you might not expect about sharks and teeth. So when we think about teeth, we think about teeth in their mouth, right? But sharks actually have teeth on another place on their body. And they actually have teeth on their skin. What? So sharks' skin. Ooh, this is, does this kind of look like little teeth here? So sharks have special skin. Um, they have special teeth on their skin called dermal denticles. So we think about a dentist take care of our teeth, dermal. If you think of a dermatologist as a doctor that takes care of your skin, that is going to help the shark. That's kind of where they get the name from. Um, and these dermal denticles, these little skin teeth, are going to help the shark uh, by making their skin a little bit tougher. So it's almost a little bit uh, like armor, uh, and it helps keep keep them a little bit safe if they bump into something. So that's a really cool um, different place that sharks have some teeth on their body, not just in their mouth. And different sharks have different sizes and shapes to kind of what these dermal denticles look like. It's pretty cool. Ooh, some more questions coming in. Um, Val um, Valeria and Gyro were asking, what is my favorite shark? Ooh, there are so many cool sharks out there. Um, hmm. I like, um, you know what? I like um, our little local sharks. I like things like horn sharks and swell sharks um, just because they're one of those egg laying sharks. I think that's something so unexpected uh, about a shark is it's a type of shark that lays an egg. And maybe we can see if we have a picture to, uh, to pop up of one of our local species of sharks here in California. Um, and uh, Samuel is asking, what is the biggest shark? Uh, so the biggest shark, oh my goodness, that is, I think, a very, very close up of a horn shark sneaking up behind me there. And he has polka dots a little bit like the zebra shark is. So the biggest shark uh, would be the whale shark, I believe. Ha! Whale shark. That guy right there. They get about 60 feet. So I think that's like about two school buses plus a car and a half. So they are a very, very big shark. They also eat something very unexpected, too, because a lot of times we think about sharks eating big stuff, right? Or we'll think about, okay, some of them will eat little guys, some of them will eat fish, maybe some really big fish, maybe um, 
seals and sea lions, if we're thinking about some larger prey, prey like what a great white would eat. But a whale shark, the biggest shark in the world, eats food that's tiny, tiny, tiny. They eat little plankton that's about the size of like your, your thumbnail or maybe your thumb. So they eat lots and lots of really, really small food with special teeth in their mouth. So they actually don't actually, actually, I take that back. They don't really even you have teeth at all. They're using their gills to help them eat like a filter. So they have little combs on those instead of teeth. And that's what's getting that plankton out of the water and helping them eat. So that's a great question, Samuel. Thanks for asking. Oh my goodness, we're almost out of time. Damien was asking, how much do sharks eat a day? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so I want to say, it depends on the shark, right? Because sharks come in different sizes. Um, they eat about 1% of their body weight every single day. Um, so um, that's about how much food sharks eat a day. So it depends kind of how, how big that shark is, how much food that is. But that's not a lot of food. If you, ooh, actually, do you guys see our big stingray coming there? So that big stingray, who's a relative of a shark, that weighs about 400 pounds. Um, so that would equate to about four pounds of food a day. So that's not a lot of food, um, considering, um, how big that animal is, right? So they actually don't eat a lot of, of, of food per day. Um, but they do have the ability to adjust their food really, really slowly. So that helps them out. So they can eat a bunch of food because they don't really know sometimes when that next opportunity for food is coming. They're like, okay, I had breakfast. I'm not quite sure when out in the wild, I'm not quite sure when lunch or dinner is coming. So I'm just going to kind of work on this a little bit slowly. Um, and that helps them um, kind of make what food they do get last a little bit longer. Oh my goodness, my friends, we had so much fun. Whoa, fish coming by the camera talking about um, different types of sharks and teeth today. So I hope you had some fun um, joining me this morning. Again, if you have more questions, if you saw something during our program today a little bit later, you're like, ooh, I wish I could have asked about that. Again, you can still email us those questions after our program as well. So maybe we can get that um, address back up on our screen today. Um, and again, that is live at lbaop.org if you have any questions after our program today. But again, thank you so much for joining today. Keep on exploring, uh, and we'll see you guys a little bit later on uh, in the week. So again, thank you for coming, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye, everybody.